I might need to move to Atlanta. Players to watch out for at Euro 2020 Part 1. For cheap, good quality football jerseys, go over to www.jerseyfever.com. A link will be left in the description and use code ALANTISFOOTBALL for 5% off. So in this video, I will be analysing three players who I think could have standout Euro 2020 tournaments. I will also do another three on Soccer Factors channel, so you can find the second part to this video linked in the description below. So my first player to look out for is Turkey's veteran striker and their captain Burak Yilmaz. Yilmaz is 35 now and will be 36 by the end of the tournament, but his age hasn't stopped him having an excellent season for Liga and winners Lille, and Yilmaz can be best described as a target man, who prefers to drop deep from the forward line when Turkey have possession in the middle third, rather than looking to make runs in behind the opposition's back line. This means that his ability to link the play is vital, and he does offer Turkey the option of playing direct vertical passes into his feet or into his chest, from then to lay off to on-running attacking midfielders, such as Hakan Kalanoglu or Schengiz Under. But Yilmaz's real threat comes when he's in the box. He's a two-foot player able to shoot from either side, and this aids his ability to not only create chances for himself by getting shots away early, but also allows him to take those chances as well. In Liga this season, Yilmaz has recorded a non-penalty XG rate of 0.32 per 90, which was the 36th most in the league. However, he did massively overperform his XG rate, scoring 12 non-penalty goals, 4.63 more than expected. What this shows is that Yilmaz is a clinical finisher, and this is something that is hugely important in tournament football. Turkey may only get 5 or 6 big chances over the course of their first 3 group games, so having a clinical finisher like Yilmaz is going to be an immense asset for the team. He is also likely to be involved in the creation of goals for others as well, as this season in league only recorded an expected assist rate of 0.18 per 90, showing that he isn't just a goal scorer, so I expect him to have contributions with assists as well as goals throughout this tournament, and I think he could be a good under the radar shout for the golden boot, particularly with Turkey likely to get out of their group, and him being the focal point of their attack. Before I get on to the next player, remember to subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications as I will be releasing a lot more Euro 2020 videos over the next 6 weeks or so. So the next player to watch out for is Italy's Nicolo Barella. Barella has been one of the best central midfielders in world football this season, playing the role of a dynamic, industrious boxer box midfielder as one of the two midfielders ahead of Marcelo Brozovic in Antonio Conte's 5-3-2 system at Inter Milan. Barella will play a similar role for Roberto Mancini's Italy, though instead of a 5-3-2 system, I expect Mancini to use a 4-3-3 with Verratti and Barella alongside one of Jorginho, Sensi or Manuel Locatelli. Barella will play as one of the two central midfielders ahead of a deeper line midfielder and therefore will be given the freedom to push forward in the attack. When he's able to move forward between the lines, he has a vision and passing ability to open up defences and create chances. And against Real Madrid earlier on in the season in the Champions League, he showcased this ability. Here as Brozovic has position in the Real Madrid defensive third, in front of the Real Madrid midfield, we can see that Barella has positioned himself in the half space between the lines of the Real Madrid defence and midfield, which draws Sergio Ramos out of the back line and then creates the space for Lautaro Martinez to make the run into. Brozovic finds Barella, who has the awareness and technique to flick the ball instantly with his heel into Martinez's path, who then finishes the chance. We can see this chance creating ability when we look at his stats as he's recorded 1.3 key passes per 90, the 15th most of any central midfielder in Serie A this season, a very good rate for any central midfielder. Barella also has the ability to create from long passes from deep and can drive the attack forward with his dribbles in a quick transition in attack. This is why I think Barella could be a star in this tournament, as he is a perfect central midfielder to have for a side who wants to sit deep and counter quickly, and whilst Mancini has tried to instill a possession based style, in the bigger games when Italy go deeper into the tournament, we may see a change of style into a deeper defensive shape and a quicker transition in attack, which is where I think we could see the best of Barella come out, particularly with Chiesa in the side who provides a dynamic running ability ahead of the ball, providing options for the type of through balls that Barella excels at, you could easily see Barella being responsible for a few crucial Italian attacks throughout the tournament. My third player to look out for is the Netherlands 22 year old wide forward Daniel Marlon. Marlon was a joint second highest goalscorer in the Eredivisie, playing for second place PSV. He scored a total of 19 goals without any penalties, and that's a rate of 0.7 non-penalty goals per 90. He is very much a winger forward hybrid, and his best position is probably playing as a wide forward in a front two, or as a wide forward in a front three, where he can be given the freedom to roam out wide, look to pick up the ball and dribble at the defender on that side, and make a run in behind the back line into a goal scoring position. Marlon is an excellent close control dribbler, which gives him the 
the ability to navigate through defenders in the box and then get a shot away quickly with power. This shooting ability is what could really make him stand out, especially if he's deployed as a wide forward, given the freedom to sit higher up the pitch and break into space when Netherlands win the ball back. The only concern I would have is that Frank De Boer is a manager and it's fair to say that he has failed spectacularly almost everywhere that he's been. However, if the Netherlands are to get out of the group, which you would imagine they would be able to do and push on to the latter stages of the tournament, then you would imagine that Marlon would also play a crucial role, bringing goals and chance creating ability to the side. So that was the first three players that I think you should look out for at the Euros. The second part with the other three that I've selected will be on Soccer Factors channel and that will be linked in the description below. So go and check that out now. And also, as usual, subscribe to this channel, click the notification so you get notified when my Euro 2020 videos come out and my Manchester United transfer series videos will be coming out shortly as well. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter as well for more content.